Coach Corey Wayne and this is my video coaching newsletter and the topic of today's newsletter is going to be relationship negotiations. Well, something I learned early on in sales is that in every interaction in life, somebody always gets sold. Either they sell you on why you should do or give them what it is that they want or you sell them on why you shouldn't. I mean, it's that simple. Somebody's always getting sold. And part of being successful in life and especially in relationships is being a good negotiator, standing up for yourself and getting what it is that you want. So I've got an email here from a guy who's in that situation. He's trying to reattract an ex of his, but at times he's doing, because he's very successful in business and he's used to going after things and doing things to get what he wants. And then he tries to take that same mindset and apply it in his relationships and obviously blows up in his face. Even his ex-girlfriend has told him that he needs to back off and chill out and not try to force things so much. But he's not been taking direction so well. So the quote that I wrote says, all of life is a negotiation. When it comes to getting what you really want in life and getting the terms that are most important to you, You absolutely must be willing to walk away and never look back when you are offered terms or circumstances that are not to your liking. Fear of loss and not getting what you want and letting those fears hijack you emotionally are the greatest obstacles that get in the way and prevent most people from getting what they really want and deserve in life. Just like Sun Tzu said 2,500 years ago, Every battle is won before it is fought. Before you enter into any professional and personal negotiation, you must decide ahead of time what you are and are not willing to accept. So let's go through his email. He says, hey, Corey, first off, I think you are a genius. Well, I appreciate that, but really, I'm just another fucking guy. You know, what is a genius, really? A genius really is just nothing more than being able to simplify things that most people perceive as being com- complicated. So I, what I basically do for a living is I simplify things for people and I help them focus on what's most important so they can get the outcomes that they're looking for, whether it has to do with their personal life, their careers, their businesses, their friendships, whatever it happens to be. Everything you said so far is right and has happened. And this particular guy, I think I, I did a phone session with him back, I think back in December. So this was about two, three months ago. He says, everything you said so far is right and has happened. As we discussed on our Skype session, Jessica, that's not her real name, reached out to me after dumping me at Christmas and we had dinner together on Friday the 16th. As mentioned, she was married for 30 years and has been separated for about 19 months but has dated other guys before me, including one before she left her husband. So she's a cheater. Hmm. Well, if she cheats on him when she's not happy, guess what? If you get into a relationship with her, that's right. That's how she operates. People who have a high self-esteem and who are healthy and who love themselves and value themselves and respect other people and who are loyal – they're not going to cheat. They're going to leave the relationship. They're going to know that the relationship is fucked and as hard as it is, they're going to leave. And then they're going to spend time focus, focusing on themselves, being single, getting back into a social life, doing things that are fun for them, creating a great social life for themselves before they get to the point where they are, they're ready to jump into another relationship or even start dating again. It's healthy to take some time to grieve and to heal when a long-term relationship is ended, especially one as long as she went through. She said she wanted us to carry on seeing each other but at a snail's pace. In other words, she's saying slow your roll, dude. This is not a mad dash to the finish line. There's just too many vi- too many movies, too many TV shows out there that are just focused on a guy locking a girl down to a commitment. What's, what's interesting is when you look at movies from 40, 50, 60 years ago, Especially like the golden age of Hollywood, women were always throwing themselves at guys, trying to lock the guy down to commitment so they could nest and have a family together. And the guys eventually reluctantly agreed and went along with it and they all lived happily ever after. 
And what's interesting is that's the way men and women naturally interact with one another when they do the things that I talk about in my book. But what you see presented to us on TV and the movies every fucking day is the complete opposite. It's just completely pussified and feminized most of the men in this world. And it's one of the reasons why women are always saying it's like all the great guys are taken, gay or they're married. She told me I could date other women but later in the evening she told me she didn't really want me to do that. She also said she wasn't convinced that I could go slowly as she knows how aggressive I am in business and how I always want things now. So that tells you right there that she already knows you're impatient and that comes off as being needy and desperate. You're basically acting like you're never going to meet another girl again as long as you live. Think about it. In your sales negotiations, if you acted needy and desperate, you get blown off. They would go with the other company. If you had something that was so good, so valuable to offer to somebody and you stuck to that preposition, the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. Think about it. You're giving them the gift of your time. And if you thought you were the most awesome, perfect person for that other person that you happen to be involved with, you're not going to want to be with just anybody. You're not going to just give your time away to just anybody like it means nothing. It's like I heard this recently, I just see, just the other day. It's like I think it was a, a, a show I was watching or a movie I saw or something I may have seen on Twitter. I can't remember but it basically said something along the lines of – guy's dating this girl and she's kind of like well i've got lots of options and his response was something along the lines of yeah well when something's on sale you always have a lot of people who want what's on sale so in other words it doesn't really mean just because you have lots of in other words if you're really cheap that doesn't mean that all your options are, are great in other words, if you're really easy and you have lots of options, what does that really mean? Does that really mean that you're high value? It was a fucking great comeback. I can't remember the exact words, but it was awesome. She even said she was really proud of me for my achievements. I kept things playful and we had a great time. We were at the restaurant for four hours and for the last couple of hours or so, she was holding my hand, had taken her shoes off and was rubbing her feet up and down my legs. Ooh, frisky. She told me she missed me and asked if I felt the same and asked if I had looked at some photos we took when we were dating. She said she missed my hands on her and she had discussed me with her mother and told her she missed being with me and all the conversations that we had. She also mentioned that her daughter was upset she was seeing me again and told her that she was giving me false hope. She scolded me for deleting her from Facebook and told me it was my fault we hadn't seen each other since she dumped me as I had refused to stay friends. Well, hey, you stood up for yourself and what you wanted, so I like that. That's part of being a good negotiator. She's like, you know, I want to keep you as an option in my life, as a backup position. I want it like a break glass in case of emergency male companion. And a guy who's like, I'm the most valuable thing she's ever had in her life. You believe that about yourself and a woman says, hey, let's be friends. You're like, I don't think so. I'm not interested in that. No fucking way. No fucking way will I interact with you in a platonic sense. That's just not going to happen. I repeated that I didn't want that and couldn't pretend to be your friend when I wanted to kiss, hold and have sex with her. Fucking good job, dude. That's the proper response. That's a great position of negotiation. You're basically communicating that these are your terms. This is what you're looking for. And if she's not willing to offer those terms, then, well, I guess we can't do business. She replied that these things all start from friendship. Yeah. And I replied that we had gone beyond it. Listen to what she says. She replied that those things all start from friendship. Notice the indirect fucking way that she come tries to fly under the radar and like, well, this is a really good idea, me putting you in friend zone. Come on, this is this is really a great thing. And he's going, fuck that. 
That's why I say that's another reason why I say read the book ten to fifteen times. You got to know the fundamentals so well because women are relentless, especially if they think you're weak and compliant and that you'll go along with what they want. And you're like, uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> he says, I'm not interested in being friends. And here, two sentences later, she's trying another another way to justify why friendship is a good thing. She's trying to sell him on why he should go along with what she thinks she wants. He's like, no. You can ask me a thousand different ways. I'm my answer still gonna be no. I talked to a guy today who got dumped back three months ago and he continued to go along with being friends and he still hangs out with this girl, works out with her and she's fucking somebody else now and I was like, dude, there's nothing I can do to help you, man. I mean at that point, it's like she's fucking somebody else. She's with another guy and you said you weren't interested in being friends but yet for the last 90 days – You've continually interacted with her like a friend. You're stuck in friend zone. Put a fork in it, dude. Next time she wants to work out, you just say, hey, you know, I adore you but you know, I need to meet somebody new and I can't if we're hanging out as friends. I told you before that doesn't work with me. But he's been so compliant. This girl's really super hot, he says. And I can tell he was really into her. But, you know, he kissed her ass, he put her on a pedestal, she stuck him in friend zone, and he went, Okay. Okay, I'll do the friendship thing and maybe she'll see how awesome I am and won't be back. And instead, she went and started fucking somebody else. And now he's got three months later a really bad case of blue balls. She moved on to a new guy but he's really important to her and she really wants him in her life. And she was pissed off when he said he wasn't interested in being friends. She's like, oh, three months now. It's like, what's the problem? She got pissed off at him. I said, that's because your, friend, your friendship was a fraudulent one. That's why she got pissed. You went along with being friends even though that's not what you want. It's one of the worst things you can do. I said you, you – it's unrecoverable at this point. I even talk about that in my book. You can't agree to be friends or be friends first with somebody who you want to date. It's a fraudulent friendship. It's weak. Men who value – remember, you're the most valuable commodity that's ever come into that person's life. And they, and they look at you like, I don't want that and they just throw it in the trash can. Think about it. You give a Christmas gift or a birthday gift to somebody you really care about and you spend a lot of time and a lot of money picking out the perfect gift from them and like, oh, that's a piece of shit and they throw it in the trash. How would that make you feel? That's basically what's going on. Somebody tries to stick you in friend zone and you don't want that. They're throwing your, your romantic offer in the trash like you're fucking garbage. You're a fucking idiot. You're going to pick that out of the trash and say, see you later. I'm going to go give that to somebody else who's going to appreciate me. Have a nice fucking life. When we left, I jokingly suggested we go back to my place but she joked that she knew what I wanted and said, not now. I kissed her outside the restaurant with tongues and and said, call me. She said, I will. I heard nothing after that. On Tuesday, I made the mistake of sending her an email, come on, man, which was about a job I heard about and just said I thought she might be interested. Sure, you were looking for an excuse to contact her, dude. Come on, man. It's like everything you've been doing, you just you've been so congruent with your words, say I'm not interested in being friends, and then you act like a friend here doing that. You walked and you never looked back, and then you're like, oh here's this job offer. You're looking for excuses to reach out. You're still chasing, you're still pursuing. This is gonna cause her to have a wishy-washy feeling towards you. She doesn't trust your masculine core because you said one thing and now your actions are the complete opposite. It's like just – when you do that, when you say you're not interested in being friends and then you reach out, it's like hitting the reset button. You start all over. All that time that went by, it's just evaporated. It's like starting the game all over again. She replied very enthusiastically and told me about what a good day she had and sent me pictures of a press conference she was responsible for. You said on the Skype session that this would put me back a week and you were right. I'm psychic like that, dude. He says, I heard nothing again from her until Sunday night when I got a text at 10 p.m. which said, Hi, Bob. How are you doing? I've been off the radar for a while. I got a nasty flu which floored me courtesy of my work. I hope your family's well. Take care. He says, I replied at 11 p.m. You're an option to this woman. 
you should be out on a date or maybe in bed. You should be busy doing something. But you fucking drop what you're doing to reply to this woman who was like, eh, eh, when you asked her to get together. It's like you're saying – after you pulled your your gift out of the trash and she went, ah, I guess this ain't worth anything. And you threw it right back in the fucking trash again. I know I should have waited for the next day. Hi, sweetheart. Sorry to hear you haven't been well. Been really busy. Busiest month we've ever had. Give me a call when you want to meet up. I received no reply. But then at midnight, I got a Facebook friend request from her, which I accepted the next day, which was yesterday. Then at about 2.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon, she sent me an email with an article about the 10 best voted hotels in the world, which said – to which I said, Hi, sweetie. I thought you would be interested in these winners. Great to hear that your business is booming onwards and upwards. Have a fun, productive week. I replied, hi, sweetheart. They all – oh, okay. So this is what she said to him. So then his response to that, to the hotel email was, hi, sweetheart. They all look amazing. Have a great week too. He says, I thought it would be overkill to mention getting together again as I had done that the night before. Since then, I've heard nothing, no mention of getting together. Well, like I say in the article and in my book, the article being Seven Principles to Get an X Back. So for those of you who haven't, might not have seen it, just Google Corey Wayne, Seven Principles to Get an X Back and go watch it. You're going to ask on two separate consecutive occasions when she reaches out to you first to make a date. And if she blows you off, changes the subject, then you're never going to bring it up again after that. And then so say you'd already done that and she sends you this thing about the hotels. I would have said, hey, honey, great to hear from you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Got to run. Keep in touch. That's your response. She's going to get – if it's a text, two to three text replies max. You're going to say, hey, it was great hearing from you but I got to run. Keep in touch. You're never going to ask her out again after that. One or two things will happen. She'll either bring up getting together or she'll stop contacting you all together. Again, this is what happens when you read the book 10 to 15 times. You know that stuff. But I can tell you don't know it. You don't know the fundamentals well enough. So as somebody said in one of your videos, help me, Obi-Wan. Should I show patience or am I wasting my time? Is she testing me to see if I can go slowly? Is she building up to something? And another thing is you don't go meet her out. You invite her over to your place to make dinner together. And that's part of the problem. You're still in pursuit mode. Okay, I'm going to be – you're too nice. You're too accommodating to this particular woman. She's treating you like an option and you're dropping what you're doing, driving across across town, instantly responding no matter what hour of the day or night she's texting you. And what happens? She doesn't even bother replying. You you bring up getting together and she just doesn't even respond. Think about that, dude. Who's negotiating, you or her – like what you have to offer is more valuable. Well, she definitely is acting like somebody that has something that you really want and you're acting like somebody who has like yesterday's lottery numbers. Like, like that's going to matter. You, know, you give somebody the lottery numbers from yesterday when the drawings already happened. Well, it's fucking useless. not even worth the paper they're printed on. Have I been unwittingly manipulated in the friend zone? Well, you're kind of doing it to yourself. What do you think is happening here? Well, you're kind of fumbling the football because you don't know the fundamentals. And like I said, you're only going to ask on two separate consecutive occasions to get together when she reaches out to you first. But you haven't done that. And plus you're still pursuing because you sent her an email a few days ago. So you're still pursuing. He says, I really need your guidance. If I had been friend zone, then I would want to cut her off and move on. I don't want to be kept on a leash as an option. This tells me you're waiting around and you're constantly obsessing over where you stand with her. That's not something James Bond would do. James Bond, is he's banging other girls at this point. He ain't waiting around. He's got options. He may get killed by the bad guys tomorrow. He ain't got any time to waste. Why? Because his time is really fucking valuable. It's precious. And you're acting like your time is not precious at all. You act like you're... You're a fucking disposable commodity and therefore she treats you like a disposable commodity. But if not and she's testing me, then I should stay the course I guess. In the meantime, I'm I'm making dates with other women which in all honesty, I feel uncomfortable doing as I don't want to hurt anyone. Dude, you're not dating her and you're not even fucking her anymore. Who you date and who you fuck is none of her business any more than who she's dating and fucking is any of your business. 
Fucking play ball, dude. Again, you're putting this girl on a pedestal and you're kissing her ass and she hasn't earned it. It's none of her fucking business. She's really special to me and if there is a chance, I want to work with her or am I being an old fool? Well, part of the problem is you're not making – trying to make a date when she reaches out and then you're going to her instead of having her come to you. Just like I discussed in my book and also in the article and video, Seven Principles to Get an X Back. For at least three consecutive dates, when she reaches out first, she's got to come to you. Hang on, have fun, and hook up at your place. That means making dinner together. And if she tries to get you to meet her out or pick it up, you pick her up. You're gonna go, nah. It's been a long week, and I'm just in the mood to hang in my place. If you don't want to come over and make dinner together, then you know what? Give me a call in two to three weeks, and maybe I'll be up for something more formal then. And that's it. And then you do the takeaway. One or two things will happen. She'll go, okay, yeah, that's great. I'll come over for dinner. Or she'll like, okay, yeah, I'll give you a call in a few weeks. That's not what you want. If she really valued you and your time, she'd clear her schedule and drop what she's doing to come spend time with you. You're just not being a great negotiator. That's part of the problem. It's like you don't value yourself and you don't value your time and you're just acting desperate. You're still pursuing and that's why you're getting jerked around. That's why you're just kind of going around in circles and it's not going anywhere. You've got to follow the principles of what I teach if you want it to work. You can't apply half of them and expect to get – good quality results. Read the book 10 to 15 times. You got to learn the fundamentals so you tighten up your game because it's really sloppy. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 